Well, just days after the RBA admitted that inflation is rising but committed to keep interest rates close to zero for the next 12 months, the US Federal Reserve overnight has started to withdraw stimulus from the American economy. Ross Greenwood joins us now. Uh, Ross, so let's talk this through. The reason there's pressure on rates is because global economies are stronger and prices are starting to rise. That's what these central banks are concerned about, aren't they? Yeah, it is. It's all about inflation. So you know, you saw this out of Philip Lowe earlier this week and really he was starting to talk about, yeah, there's inflation there. Until now, really, the central banks have said, look, we're looking through this. We think once economies come back to normal, as it were, we think that the inflation will disappear and things will go back to normal. But increasingly, it's seeming as though things will not go back to normal. One example is oil prices being so strong right now. And you see it when you're filling up at the pump and you know this is adding to your cost. But it's not just your cost. It's the cost of all goods. But then there's a second factor, and that is the shortage of supply of goods from other parts of the world, and in particular, the shortage of containers. And that's causing real problems in terms of supply chains and as a result of that. Now, overnight, as a result of the rising prices, the US Federal Reserve has indicated it'll start to withdraw the bond-buying program that it's had, $15 billion a month it'll withdraw. It expects to actually end it completely by the middle of next year. Here's Jerome Powell, who is the chairman of the US Federal Reserve, talking just overnight. If the economy evolves broadly as expected, we judge that similar reductions in the pace of net asset purchases will likely be appropriate each month implying that increases in our securities holdings would cease by the middle of next year. That said, we are prepared to adjust the pace of purchases if warranted by changes in the economic outlook. And that attitude, Laura, you see, is really adding to the suggestion that interest rates will start to rise. It's not normal to have interest rates so close to zero for such a long time. And so eventually there's going to be pressure. And you see that in money markets with money market interest rates, 10-year bonds, three-year bonds, all rising, really anticipating, if you like, the future interest rate rises both here and around the world. Indeed, uh, absolutely. We're going to be speaking to the ACCC boss, Rod Chairman, in just a moment. One of the big issues the competition watchdog has highlighted is the chronic problems at our ports leading to shortages, price increases and inflation. Yeah, well, that's right. And this is an important issue because Rod Sims obviously has now put out a report. But I just want to take you to a, a graphic I just made this morning, really showing you just where the world is going to with all of this. So this is the Wall Street Journal, a headline out of today's Wall Street Journal. Where are all the track drivers? Shortage adds to delivery delays. Now, that's the same story here in Australia. There are not enough truck drivers. We went and interviewed one of the bosses of trucks uh, in trucking in Australia, paying drivers $150,000 a year. Here's another one. IKEA in the Financial Times in London warns of price rises and lower profits has cost and supply pressures bite. So it's a, it's a common theme around the world. Then we come back here to Australia and you get this headline that's coming out of the Australian this morning, port delays crippling the economy, says the ACCC. Now, you'll talk to Rod Sims about that, but the fact of the matter is, right now, you've not only got industrial actions on our ports, but you've also got some of the slowest port handling in the world, in Australia, that adds to costs. But then you've got the price of actually getting the freight here to Australia in the first place because of these shortages of containers. So it's all adding to the prices that we pay. Yep, we'll get some answers hopefully from Rod Sims in just a moment. And today, uh, finally, before we let you go, the big story is that the department store business, Maya, and the prospect it could face no confidence motion from shareholders today. Yeah, well, it's already had one strike against its uh, uh, executive remuneration and its board. Uh, a second strike would mean, really, there'd have to be another vote of the shareholders to determine whether, in fact, there would be a spill motion of that board. Solomon Lewis, is, of course, the significant shareholder here, and Solomon Lewis long campaigned vigorously against the board and wants his own representatives on the board. Of course, he's always stopped short of making a full and formal takeover bid for Meyer. Mm. Meyer's performance has improved, I should say, over the last period of time. It is, seems to be a better company and got through the worst of its times but still, this is uh, a fight that'll keep on going and in the next hour or so we'll find out exactly what those shareholders think. Ross, I know you keep us up to date. Thanks so much for that. We'll see you soon.